Good evening, good evening, good evening. We are thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for our meeting here. We're thankful and grateful to all of you, our Heavenly Father's children, who are here with us tonight. We are thankful and grateful that you are here and that our being here is not against our will, but it is the gift of God. Let us begin tonight with one of the old church standards. Oh, how I love Jesus. And forgive me, I got to turn on a little extra light so I can see these words. I love to sing his word It sounds like music in my ear The sweetest name on earth Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me It tells me of a Savior's love Who died to set me free It tells me of his precious blood The sinner's perfect free Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome past, you sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me He tells me all One's loving heart Can feel my deepest woes Who in each sorrow bears a part That none can bear below Oh how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me Let us pray Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful that once again you have brought us together and bringing us together is not against our will, but it is uh, because of your grace and mercy that we are here right now. We thank you, O oh God, that things are as well as they are, for we realize it is not by our goodness, but it is by your goodness that we are still 
hear and still able uh, to do your blessed will. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you for we realize uh, you could have chosen someone else, but you saw fit to bless us and give us this opportunity. Now, Lord, we ask that you uh, look on our sick tonight, those that are sick among us. There's so much sickness in our land and country. We ask that you would heal the land. We ask that you would heal the minds and hearts of sinful mankind. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. Look on our city tonight as our city is in much turmoil. But you, O oh God, hold the answer to whatever betides us. All we have to do is let your will be done. We pray, O oh God, for the members of Pilgrim Rest, that you would bless them with health and strength, that you would bless them to continue to be COVID-free. We ask this not because we feel so righteous, but because you are such a good and gracious God. We ask, O oh God, that you look on our nation tonight, as there's so much turmoil in our nation. We look, O oh God, and it appears that there may be looming on the horizon another civil war. But you, O oh God, have the last word. We ask right now that you would bless each and every one of us to have a mind and a heart to say to one another, we can get along together and we will get along together. We will sit down like civilized human beings and talk out our differences and work as one for the good of all. Right now, in the name of Jesus, bless nations all over the earth. So many are dealing with this disease right now, and you, O oh God, have the healing finger. Touch tonight with our divine healing finger. Not only that, but touch the bereaved tonight. So many are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch their minds and hearts and allow them to know that it is a reality in serving a true and living God. And when all had been said and done, we ask that you would continue to bless us as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tonight we began a new chapter. We began a uh, a new lesson we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about tonight we're going to talk about the effects of the gospel when I say effects I'm talking uh, in, a, in a matter of how people respond to the gospel tonight we would uh, zero in on uh, how some when they re hear the gospel they respond by being by becoming filled with the Holy Spirit so tonight as we look at uh, as we look at the gospel story and we look at how it can affect all of us and how it can affect our way of doing things, we ask that you open your minds and your hearts as we look at this and as it becomes clear and clear how we are going to deal with it. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about some of the events that are taking place all over the world right now and it's time for us as children of God uh, to become more and more concerned about what's going on not only in our immediate neighborhood but what's going on all around the world. Let's look at this for a few minutes. How people respond to the gospel. 
after spending only a few short only spending a short time in Antioch following his second missionary journey Paul begins his third missionary journey for the purpose of encouraging the disciples in the churches founded on his previous journey Acts 18 and 23 leaving Antioch Paul heads by land to Ephesus where he left Priscilla and Aquila on his second missionary journey Paul before Paul arrived they explained the way of the Lord more fully to a brilliantly educated man named Apollos who had known only of the baptism of John the Baptist Acts 18 verses 24 through 28 on this journey we will discover five ways people respond to the gospel the first one that we're going to look at tonight is becoming filled or becoming spirit filled becoming spirit filled if you would you can turn to Acts 19 verses 1 through 7 Acts 19 verses 1 through 7 and it and it happened when and it happened when while Apollos was at Carrot that Paul having passed through the upper regions came to Ephesus and finding some disciples he said to them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, unto, and he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Now, this particular passage uh, in verse, in verse, in verse, I believe it, verse 4, Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism, saying to the people that they should believe on him that would come after him, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized. Verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. For a long time, there was much controversy and conflict between the Baptists and the Church of God in Christ because of this 19th chapter and verse 5 where Paul said when they where the Bible says when they heard this they were baptized in the name of Jesus the controversy was that when you baptize somebody it, in the Baptist Church we were we are taught baptizing them as is in Matthew chapter 28 baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit the Church of God in Christ said unless you baptize them in the name of Jesus then they really haven't been baptized 
And we argued the point that if I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus is included in there. And therefore, there really wasn't a controversy. It was just a matter of, of a difference of opinion. That went on for years, and it finally got cleared up uh, here in the black, in the in the last uh, 15 or 20 years. But that was a, a place or a bone of contention between Church of God and Christ and, and the Baptist Church. In fact, that was one of the reasons that they split when they did. All right, if we move just a little bit farther. When Paul arrived in Ephesus, he encountered some disciples who have not as much as heard anything about the Holy Spirit. That's what uh, verse chapter 19, verse 1 and 2 said. They said, we don't even, we never heard. You talking about receive the Holy Ghost. We have never heard of the Holy Ghost. I want to say this right here. Some of us in the church today <clears throat> act as though we have never heard of the Holy Ghost. We act as if there is no such thing as the Holy Ghost. So we want to say and I don't know why we want to say it but we want to say we want to sit in church and act as if we never heard of being filled with the Holy Ghost we think being filled with the Holy Ghost simply means that we are going to jump up and down and, and shout and holler and, and fall on the floor and roll around and all kinds of stuff but don't you know when you truly have accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ you must be filled with the Holy Ghost you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost that's the only way you can allow the Word of God to lead and guide your life you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Like Apollos, they know only of the baptizing, baptism of John. So Paul explains the gospel to them. They believed and are baptized. Paul then placed his hand on them and they received the Holy Spirit and spoke with tongues and prophecies. This is a mini Pentecost. The big one took place earlier. The word translated tongue, glossa, means language. When the disciples received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they spoke in tongues and the crowd was amazed because the disciples were uneducated Galileans, Acts 2 and 7. Therefore, in Acts 2 and 8, a question came up. And what question was this that was asked? The question that was asked in Acts 2 and 8 was, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Well, a lot of folk want to talk about unknown tongue. No matter, in this particular case, these folk, when they the, were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak to everybody around them in the language that they were born speaking or the language that they grew up speaking 
no matter what your race, color, nationality, or language, God speaks to you in a language that you can understand. And it does not matter who you are. He speaks to you in a language you can understand. This is not an unknown language. It is their native tongue that we're talking about here. Their native tongue. We always want, we want to always make something out of things that's really not there. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues. They spoke in languages. They spoke the language of the people that were listening to them. And there was a practical reason for it. So that no matter what race, color, nationality they were. No matter what language they spoke, God was speaking through these men in a language that they could understand. It might have been unknown to you. But there was somebody in the crowd that knew exactly what was being said. Because that was the language that they spoke. Whatever the reason for the believers in Ephesus speaking in tongues, it is the last time speaking in tongue is mentioned in the book of Acts. Paul later writes, to the Ephesians. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18. Then Paul listed the results of being filled with the Spirit, which includes speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, as well as giving thanks always for all things unto God. Ephesians 5 verses 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Now Paul also describes something else in Ephesians as a result of being spirit filled. According to Ephesians 5 and 21. And in Ephesians 5 and 21 it says talks about submitting yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. Submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. When we submit to God we become more willing to obey his commands to submit to others. Let me say that again. When we submit to God, we become more willing to obey his command to submit to others. Submit to those in authority over you. That is, to subordinate Sub subordinate our rights to theirs. I got a right, our rights. In a marriage relationship, both husband and wife are called to submit. As members of society, we are called to submit to those with authority over us. Now we want to add to that as long as they are right. When we submit to God, we are more willing 
to obey the command to submit to others. This means we are willing to be taught, we are willing to serve, and we are and to be corrected by others. We are willing to be taught, to serve, and be corrected by others. Now, that might sound like a lot to some, and to others it doesn't sound like much of anything. In a marriage relationship, husband and wives are called to submit. Wives, submit to your own husband. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. And we follow it. Before, this, before we finish this lesson, I told you there are five things we need to know about uh, how people respond to the gospel. And uh, we, we may cover this in a little more detail, a little more detail. When we submit to God, when we have true submission it's a sign that we are spirit filled believers because it takes the guidance of the Holy Spirit for you to humble yourself and allow yourself to be taught We're going to talk about false teachers further down in this lesson. It means that you should be willing to serve. There's no such thing. We don't want to talk about bench members. There's no such thing as a bench member. Everybody that's a believer in Jesus Christ and is a member of any congregation you are not there to sit on the pew. You are there to serve. And you're going to serve. If you simply listen to what the preacher or the pastor is saying. And there must be a willingness to be corrected by others. When you are wrong. Or you have the wrong understanding. You must be willing to be corrected. And the only way you can have that kind of submission is if you are filled or if you are spirit filled. And when you are, have truly submitted yourself to God, sometimes nobody has to correct you. You'll come back and correct yourself. You know, I made a mistake when I said da 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 da. I misunderstood the meaning of I had the wrong interpretation of that passage. Speaking in tongue, in this chapter in Acts, is talking about speaking in the language, in the native tongue of the listeners. Now here's what would be a gift. If I come in to preach one Sunday morning 
and there's someone there from a different country speaking a different language and through the power of the Holy Spirit I speak what's in the Bible in our native tongue English and then turn around and speak to them in their native tongue no matter what it is that would be called in my book that would be a gift to be able to speak a language that I had no prior knowledge of that would be a gift all right my time is up I've used up all of my time thank you for bearing with us we we, uh, we tried out some new things here tonight and they seem to be working I ain't gonna brag uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like they're working tonight they may not be working the next time around but God bless you for listening to what we had to offer God bless you for uh, be, being willing to accept what God has given me to give you on next week we're going to pick up 18th chapter uh, 19th chapter of Acts verse 8 through 10 is where we're going to start off and we're going to be talking about in looking at how people respond to the gospel uh, how people respond to the gospel of Christ we're going to start off talking about we talked tonight about some being spirit filled next week we're going to talk about some become hardened they harden their hearts. You know what the book of Revelation said? The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. But some folks harden their hearts because they know the gospel is finna change everything that they stand for. And they don't want that to happen. All right. I got one other thing that I need to pass along to you. Um, I've been informed and uh, I want you to keep uh, Berean Missionary Baptist Church lifted up in prayer I've been informed that Pastor Ford has announced his retirement that when he finished his sermon on, on uh, this past Sunday uh, he told his church that that was his last sermon he was retiring so we ask that you keep them lifted up in prayer. All right, we're getting ready to get out of here. Eternal God, our Father, as we come to the close of the study of your word, we ask that you open our minds and our hearts, allow your words to enter in, that we might become better servants unto thee. And now, Lord, we ask that you would bless our friend and brother, in his retirement. We know that he has toiled and labored for a number of years. We pray, O oh God, that now that he's retiring, that you bless his retirement, that he will prosper in his retirement as he did when he was active on the field. We realize that even though he's retiring, we he still uh, has a wealth of wisdom and knowledge and we pray oh God that we be able to draw on that wisdom and knowledge for your word tells us that uh, young men are for warring and old men are for counseling we pray oh God that you would continue to use him in a different capacity now and now Lord bless those that are with us on Facebook Live and those that are with us on the conference line. We pray, O oh God, and we bless your holy name. Bless us, keep us, and preserve us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we ask that you continue to look. We will be giving you further instructions as to what we are going to do uh, what we are going to do uh, a Christmas service 
right now we're leaning toward since Christmas is on Saturday we're leaning in toward having a virtual service on Christmas uh, so that everybody will be ready to come to church Sunday since that will be the last Sunday in the year we also are looking at what we're going to do for New Year's and we are still leaning in that same direction uh, about New Year's we are all we are looking at um, doing a virtual service uh, on New Year's Eve and we was, I believe last year we started around 11 o'clock 10 30 or 11 o'clock for those that could stay up that late uh, and I'm going to ask you to do that again uh, take a nap so that you can be set your alarm clock so you can get up and and about 10 10 45 so that we can have uh, a brief word as well as prayer on praying out the old year and praying in the new year and then we look for all of you first sunday in january as many as possible that can come to the in-person service to the in-person service hopefully we'll have a better handle on this new variance right now things are looking a little bit better it does not look as dire as they had once thought it might be things are beginning to look a little bit better for we have a vaccine that can handle it that can control it uh, but they're saying you need to get that if you haven't got your booster get that booster get it and you shall be better protected nothing is a hundred percent but it uh, it will have you protected to the point where the chances of you getting seriously ill is slim and next to none so let's let's get that Let's get that variant. Let's get that booster shot. Now, for those of you that uh, if you couldn't pick us up on Facebook uh, in, in about 15 minutes, uh, tonight's lesson will be on YouTube Live. All you got to do is go on YouTube, type in my name, and you'll get my, uh, <clears throat> you'll get my YouTube page and you will see tonight's lesson matter of fact you'll see all the lessons for the past 12 months uh on that youtube page if there's one there that you want to listen to again in particular uh please feel free to do it and uh, i don't know if he's still on but uh thank you uh uh reverend ware we thank you for being a part of our Bible study. All right. That's all I have for tonight. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.
Jeff, I'm 